Apple is a $165 billion sales company, so what it needs is three things. Number one, a large addressable market. The second is a growing addressable market. And three, a profitable market. And, and, and a watch market could potentially target all three of those segments. Relative to the TV, it's, uh, it's a more profitable business in our view, so it could be, it could be a, a, a threefer. Is it also more realistic? I mean, in that they might be able to get it done sooner. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Apple TV. It's still not here yet. Might the watch be more realistic in terms of its time horizon? Uh, that's very, very hard to tell. Apple's particularly secretive about product plans, and it's <laughs> unclear what the functionality of the watch will, uh, will, will entail relative to uh, anything else that's out in the market. But what's clear is that uh, a watch market is fragmented. It's certain segments of the watch market are growing. If you look at the Bloomberg Industries luxury goods sector, um, we have information that suggests that the high end of the watch market is doing really well. The mid end of the watch market is doing well. Um, and um, and it's very fragmented from a market share perspective. So, um, with with you know with with a, a segment such as this, where it's unclear what the features ought to be, mm -hmm. um, Apple could do really well in the segment. How do they make sure, Brian Blair, that they don't effectively cannibalize themselves? In other words, if you have a watch that also maybe can make some phone calls and do a little computing for you, do you still need the iPhone? Well, that's going to be the big question, and it was touched on earlier. You know, what functionality would an iWatch really offer? The best evidence we have right now of what consumers might want is with what's called the Pebble Watch. This just launched about a month ago. It was a Kickstarter project, and there were about they raised about $11 million doing a watch that allows you to get emails, to see your text messages, and get other functionality that you get on your on your smartphone without having to take it out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So that's really the best the best evidence we have right now of what consumers want. But whether or not Apple is actually going to do this, and whether it's going to sell well is going to be it's going to be critical to know what does it do you know what what do consumers want it to do what do you think consumers really want ultimately you know what i actually ordered a pebble watch it hasn't <laughs> arrived yet and um, but you'll I, be able to tell me then <laughs> well i'll tell you then but what i look forward to doing is if i'm in a if i'm eating lunch or if i'm at dinner I w i'd like to see who's calling me before i pick up the phone i'd like to see a text message without having to interrupt the the, the dinner conversation so i think that's kind of where we start and other functionality can maybe build on top of that okay let's go over to david who's watching uh, the stock price which as we mentioned before just keeps uh, really struggling. Twelve Last 12 sessions have, have been poor ones, David. Um, is it going to continue to be this way, or is a turnaround in sight? Well, I think we're close to at least an interim low. And what we've seen since the May 2009 level, where the 50-day crossed over the 200-day moving average and began a major bull run to over 700 a, a share, uh, that is, in fact, reversed. December of last year, we saw the 50 then turn down below the 200-day moving average at around $568 a share. And it's in a downtrend. Your support is at 400. You have further support at 200. But in all likelihood, you get to 400 and you bounce to 470, even five and a quarter. And then maybe further consolidation there to that 400 level. We hope the 400 level holds. If it doesn't, 200 is uh, not your first stop. You could certainly see 350, 275, mm -hmm. where there's further support, but 200 being sort of rock solid. Anand, how uh, reliant is this company on its products, the next best thing? I mean, is this, at the end of the day, it's, it's bread and butter, it's, it's life, uh, if you would, and if it doesn't come out with something hot, with something new, then it's really going to pay the price? Expectations are very high. Uh, the momentum of the iPhone is slowing, and it is an incredibly profitable product, um, both for the company as well as in the history of consumer electronics. So um, a lot rides on whatever they decide to introduce. Mm -hmm. They've got to find something good. That's right. And when we talk about the watch, Brian, as being something that's more profitable potentially than Apple TV, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't see the, so the watch industry itself actually is $60 billion industry. That's correct. City has pegged this as a $6 billion opportunity for Apple. Right. When you've looked at the numbers, are you seeing the same kind of possibility for market share or could they take even more than $6 billion? Well, you know, look, everybody says that the watch market is $60 billion. They also say it's a higher gross margin. Gross margins in the watch industry are typically 50 to 60 percent, where Apple's margins have been below 40 percent. So there's certainly opportunity there, but it still really comes down to whether or not we all agree there can be utility from having a smart watch. You know, Apple's clearly been working on this, but it doesn't mean it's going to come to market for sure. Apple often works, they have, they have 75,000 employees. They work on a lot of things that never see the light of day. Mm -hmm. I think if we all believe there's, there can be utility here, that it can be kind of an extra screen on your wrist, then, then they, they could very well do this. But it's still not clear yet. And for me, until it, there's actually evidence of it in the supply chain that it's being made, 
It's still yeah, just you're not a hope. necessarily buying the stock on the hopes that they're going to come right. out with the iWatch. Um, let's just take a guess here. If you were going to put a price tag on this thing, uh, where do you think the consumer would want to see the iWatch? A couple hundred bucks. Two, couple three, hundred bucks? Two, two, uh, for me, two, three hundred dollars probably be the sweet spot for something like this. Just given the functionality that I mentioned earlier, you know, if, it, if it's going to do more than that, you know, may, maybe it could be a little more. But we've so they'll seen... pay more for a phone than they will a watch. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Arnon, do you yeah. agree? I, I think that's that's a fair point. If you look at the current product offerings uh, available today uh, in the digital spectrum, that's about the right price range for a watch vis-a-vis uh, -a, -vis a phone.